Okay, we're back together. I think I'm going to start calling these. This is like for um, end of chapter six. I should start instead of saying which lecture it is on on the uh, <clears throat> on the course content area or where I where I the files that that I put these in. I think I should start saying that uh, this is for this is for the second half of chapter six, which is where we're going to stop. The, the exam is going to be over chapters 4, 5, and 6. There's plenty of material in there for me to, to, to just flunk you all, but I'm not going to do that. Um, it'll be very straightforward, and um, you'll be fine. But let's, let's start with the, with the forces, because we've already talked about um, the centripetal forces and all that. And we'll look at a few uh, example problems from, from the uh, uh, problems that I'd like for you to bring to the... Um, to, to class, uh, the, we'll do those in class problems. So if you if you bring your device or something and you want and you don't want to uh, copy them off, use your use your uh, fifty sheets a month or whatever they give you now. Probably five sheets a month because we're in budget crunch. Um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll look at them, but but the there there are three very fundamental forces of physics. In nature, there are general two sides, fundamental and non-fundamental. Non-fundamental, like tension and things like, you know, um, friction, those types of things that we that we just have, over the years, have labeled and said, well, they occur so much here on Earth that we go. But the, there's only three big forces of nature. That we do, and one's the gravitational force, and it's really not that strong. It is very, very weak even compared to the electroweak force, all right? Even compared to the electroweak force. In other words, the electroweak force is what attracts, um, it, it, magnetism is also in there. The, it's the electromagnetic forces that bring either repel items or bring them together. And, it, and it's usually at very, very close ranges that it's even effective, okay? Um, it, it's still a lot stronger than the gravitational force though, actually. Um, for for the size that it is like the the our gravitational force between us of 9.8 meters per second squared if if I have a uh, electron and a proton or or uh, next to each other within that are pretty close together the the force that they feel is, is pretty big the hugest such a word force is the strong nuclear force how do we smash, because like charges repel each other, okay, how do we smash all those protons together in uh, to make um, sodium or whatever, and, or, I don't know, pick a, pick a, or carbon, say, how do we smash those six carbon protons together to, to, um, to um, because the 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 repelling electro weak force repelling them is very strong when they get right next to each other it's huge but the strong nuclear force is much stronger and smashes them in there and uses little gluons and these subatomic particles like gluons and of course the neutrons help a little bit too to glue them together that's why they're called gluons all right anyway th that's all good Physics-y stuff. non fundamental friction, tension, normal, and support. All those things we use just to kind of help us solve problems. Those are non-fundamental forces are ones that man has come up with <laughs> to, to help us solve problems. The fundamental forces are the ones that nature came up with and said, here's what I'm giving you to deal with. Deal with it. Right? And... <clears throat> And there's another force out there that we don't like to talk that we don't talk about in most of our elementary physics books because it's only come about in the last six or seven years or, or maybe 15 years this whole dark energy and dark matter thing, and that's really on the frontiers of uh, cosmology, astronomy, and physics is looking at why is the why is the universe accelerating? It should be collapsing back on itself but something is pushing it so that we're accelerating it's it's an amazing thing so newton's laws of gravitation a particle okay every particle in the universe exerts an attractive force on every other particle all y'all are attracted to each other out there in the classroom because you have mass and that gravitational force looks like this oh my god that looks scary but it's actually not 
you've got mass 1 is being pulled by mass 2 to look this way. Mass 2 is being pulled by mass 1, and it goes that way. Equal and opposite forces, the system cancels. The sum of the forces of the system cancels. So nothing's accelerating because they've got the same mass. If you get something with a very different mass, like the mass of the Earth, in fact, follow me while we do this. Here's the formula. Here is Newton's gravitational constant. It actually come, came up with Cavendish almost 150 years after Newton proposed this guy, and he knew that there was some number that needed to go here to make it all work. There was some constant, but he couldn't. He didn't have the equipment to be able to figure it out. Cavendish came up, came along many many years later. Like Cavendish was chair of was the chair of the Cambridge uh, Math and Science Department, um, which Newton held about 200 years after Newton, and and he he solved this thing here. So. Um, here we go. So I've got it set on pretty big. Let, let, let's, we might want to make it just a little bit smaller, but maybe not. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I've got this. So this is uh, lecture seven, part two. I, I'm going to go like part B. I'm going to go with what we had already started, part B. So I've got this F, the force is equal to uh, the gravitational force is equal to big G times mass of 1 times mass of 2 divided by r squared. And this r is the distance between the centers of objects, between their centers of mass. Okay? So if we look at the big old Earth, here's the big old Earth, and we look at this little bitty guy standing on this big old Earth. Okay? Here's his center of mass. Center mass of the Earth is way down in here somewhere. All right. Let's figure out what the force is that he's feeling. Okay. When we know when we know these things, we know that g is equal to six point three seven times ten to the negative eleven. That's the hardest part to remember. Times now look, it's got to come out to be a force. It's got to come out to be a newton. So it's newtons, what's in the denominator? Meters squared per kilogram squared. That's the way you can figure out what, what constants are, what, gravita what certain constants are. As you look at, well, what do they got? Well, we got to get a force here. And so newton squared, kind of squared. Okay, and let's say the mass of the Earth is uh, equal to 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Let's say the mass of this person, mass of the man, is uh, 100 kilograms. Let's make it easy. Give the numbers easy. And let's say the radius of the Earth, because between this and our mass, that, th those like two and a half feet or three feet between here and there is no big deal. All right. When you talk about the when you talk about this radius, which is six point three seven times ten to the um, uh, sixth meters. Okay. Well, let's figure that out, and we'll come up. We'll we'll. I'm going to check these numbers. I know this one's. This one might be the twenty second too. So I'm going to check these numbers, and we'll come back. 